Hey guys, it's Pastor John with Corindale Church. Just want to take a moment to answer some of the questions that we got from this past Sunday as we finished Genesis chapter 2. This question actually has two parts, so I'm going to deal with it uh, separately. The first part is this. If it is not good that man should be alone, how then can we reconcile the singleness of the Son of Man and Paul? Uh, love this question. Uh, as in many of the questions, it indicates that the people who are uh, participating on Sunday are thinking critically and, and trying to connect the dots and asking questions. And I love that about our church. And I love that about this particular question. Uh, Genesis does, God does clearly say in Genesis, it's not good for a man to be alone. But we know that Jesus never married. Um, and we also know that Paul uh, was single. So how do we reconcile those things? And there's a couple things that I would that I would suggest. First of all, uh, Paul, uh, and actually every man that came after Adam, was not alone in the sense that Adam was alone. Adam was literally the only human being on the earth at that point. And so the loneliness which he experienced was not simply the loneliness of not having marriage. It was the loneliness of of no companionship, no friendship, no community whatsoever. We saw how God as the creator was over Adam, and then Adam was placed as as uh, as Lord, if you will, over the creation to take care of it. Um, and yet there was nobody beside him. There was no friendship. There was no community. And so um, nobody, uh, apart from Adam, has experienced that kind of of loneliness, that kind of isolation. And so what that means is that there are multiple ways uh, in which God addresses the issue of, of loneliness. Uh, God has created us to be in community because God himself is community, Father, Son, uh, and Holy Spirit. And there are all sorts of forms of community. There is there is family, a mom and dad, and, and, and some kids. Um, there is friendship. There is there is the church, there is, there's workplace, there's neighbors. All of these things are different ways that God addresses the issue um, of our loneliness. And it's in community um, that, we, that we learn, that we grow, that we develop as disciples, that we come to know God. And so what is true of marriage in a very specific and intense way is also true of our relationships in the world with friends, with family, and with our church. So there are multiple ways that God develops us. There are multiple ways that God addresses the issue of loneliness. Um, I, I would suggest, and I think that Tim, Tim Keller makes this um, this point in his book, The Meaning of Marriage, that, that marriage is, is probably the most intense form of community and discipleship which we experience, but it is certainly not the only form of community and discipleship that we experience. And so the issue of loneliness, there are multiple ways that God addresses with that, uh, addresses that marriage being one and probably the most intense and in intentional way um, that he addresses it so that Paul doesn't experience loneliness the way that that Adam did. Um, but there are also other things to offer here because Paul wasn't married. And um, there's some who think that he was married before and then perhaps had lost his wife or something had happened and he got divorced. We don't know. What we do know is that Paul appears to be a single man. And Paul actually does write in his letters that some are called to singleness. If you think about Paul's life and the travels, he's going everywhere. He's constantly in danger. He goes into a city. He preaches the gospel. He gets beat up and he gets left uh, for dead. Paul wasn't in a, in a position where he could actually commit uh, to caring for a wife because God had called him to a unique uh, kind of life, a unique role in the mission of God and the kingdom of God. And so um, and so marriage simply really didn't make sense with uh, the call that he had upon his life. It doesn't mean the community didn't make sense. It didn't mean that the church didn't make sense. It didn't mean that other forms of, of relationship didn't make sense. It was just that form didn't make sense. And so uh, Paul was not married, but Paul was clearly, um, he was clearly not alone. And we see the affection that he has for certain individuals, specifically Timothy, as he uh, writes to him in First and Second Timothy. Uh, the issue of Jesus, in, in some sense, is similar. Uh, Jesus knew he was going to go to the cross. Jesus knew that he could not make uh, a long-term commitment uh, to a woman for that reason. Also, Jesus could not have been equally yoked uh, to another woman uh, as he was God in the flesh and uh, the standout standard is pretty high and not met by 
anybody, and so there wasn't a uh, suitable partner for Jesus in that sense. But in another sense, um, in Ephesians 5, uh, Paul does say that Jesus had a bride, and his bride is the church. That's who he lays his life down for. Uh, that's who he cleanses. That's who he loves. That's who he is in covenant relationship uh, with, whom he has identified himself with and bound himself with for all eternity. So in a sense, there, there, is, a, there is a bride. Um, but also notice that, that Jesus, uh, throughout his life, uh, did not experience the kind of isolation that, that Adam did, that, that Jesus did have community and in that sense was not alone. Um, so really, really great uh, questions. I hope that the, that, that response is, is, um, is a little bit helpful, maybe sheds a little bit of light on what you're getting at. If not, please, as always, feel free to email me personally, john, J-O-N, at quorumdalechurch.org, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Or feel free to come and talk to me on Sunday. Would love to hear from you, and do hope to see uh, you and, and all of you this Sunday uh, at church as we gather to worship. All right, we'll talk to you soon.